In this video, I will explain how machine translation works and why artificial intelligence is the reason that modern day machine translation works so well. This will help us understand what machine translation can and cannot do and how we can use systems like Google Translate and ChatGPT effectively while being conscious of their limitations and any of the risks involved. So how do these systems work? What is machine translation? Simply put, a machine translation is a translation that was generated automatically by a machine without any help or interference from a human being. The machine that does the translating is hidden behind a web interface such as Google Translate or DeepL or one of the many translation apps that you can download onto your mobile phone. You simply open the app or the web interface, you select the languages combination you want, you copy or you start typing your source text, the text you want to translate, and then immediately you see the translation being generated right before your very eyes. It only takes a second. And while it's true that using machine translation is easy, using it effectively and critically requires some thought. But first, we need to gain a better understanding of the process that leads to these instantaneous translations that very often appear to be of high human-like quality. It's useful to know a bit more about the history of machine translation and how this process developed over time. The first generation of machine translation architectures was built in the 1950s and 60s and was rule-based. It worked by providing the system with a huge dictionary and lots and lots of grammar rules for one specific language direction, say translation from Dutch into English. You can imagine just how time-consuming these systems were to build, trying to specify each and every grammar rule for a specific language direction and then having to do the same thing over and over again for every possible language combination. And then the output really wasn't very good. But then again, computers weren't very good. The idea was there, but the technology wasn't. By the 1980s and 90s, computers had become much faster and the internet was on the rise. Engineers soon realized they should let machines do what they do best, run lots and lots of calculations really, really fast. So instead of training the machine on a dictionary and grammar rules, engineers started feeding their systems lots and lots of data. Specifically, lots of source text or originals, and their human translations. So the machine could go through the translations and find patterns. For each word, the system would search through the data and calculate the statistical probability that word A in language A corresponds to word B in language B. Statistical machine translation already worked surprisingly well, but something was still missing. By the year 2010, Engineers had recognized the potential of artificial intelligence, and they introduced machine learning and neural networks into their systems. Neural machine translation systems place each word in a multi-dimensional space, in which words that are related appear close together, and words that are unrelated appear far apart. So now the machine can calculate the distance between words, and can use the coordinates of words in the multidimensional space to predict which word and which translation of a word you need in a particular context. So, for instance, the word mouse can refer to the animal, but also to the device you use to position the cursor on your computer screen. In the animal sense, mouse will appear close to words such as rodent, tail, cheese and cat, while the computer sense of mouse will appear close to words such as computer, keyboard, typing and cursor. It's very important to realize that neural machine translation needs context to predict which word and therefore which translation you need. For example, in French the word avocat can mean either a lawyer or an avocado, but without the right context the machine is just as likely to produce the translation you need a lawyer as the translation you need an avocado. The machine simply cannot tell the two apart. It has no world knowledge and it doesn't actually read or understand your text. 
the way a machine calculates and predicts word meanings is very different from the way humans understand meaning. And without the proper context and without the right training data, the machine can produce the strangest translations without a second thought, because it isn't actually thinking. Although this sometimes leads to hilarious mistakes, and there are lots and lots of memes and anecdotes out there, you would do well to be cautious when using machine translation, especially for languages you do not know at all, since the errors will not always be so obvious or easy to spot. And they may at times have serious consequences, especially in legal or medical settings. Generative AI and large language models can also be used to produce translations by prompting a system like ChatGPT to translate a specific text into the language you want. Similar to neural machine translation, the GPT system will calculate and predict which words you need and then generate the translation. At present, GPT models perform slightly worse because the language models on which they are trained do not actually distinguish between languages and they are not trained specifically on translation patterns. However, one obvious advantage of ChatGPT over a system like Google Translate is of course that you can use a system like ChatGPT to further correct, revise and refine your text. You can ask it to make the translation more formal or more poetic. You can ask it why it has used particular words or particular grammatical constructions, especially when you suspect a mistranslation has taken place. You can even ask ChatGPT to make cultural adaptations or remove taboo language. That is, you can actually use it to make all kinds of changes that human translators would normally make. Just remember that ChatGPT also doesn't think or understand your text. It's predicting and generating translations based on the training data and your prompt. So think carefully about what you're asking it to do and be critical of the translation you receive. No matter how smart the machine gets, if you're not smart in using it, you're bound to run into problems.